In this session, we'll look at a way to use feature lines to model a sidewalk ramp. Now I've got a drawing open on my screen. Let's take a quick tour. This geometry represents a model of a proposed parking lot design. In fact, let me select my top surface. I'll choose Object Viewer, and we can orbit this around. As you can see, the majority of the parking lot has been modeled. I am currently working on the sidewalks, and part of the sidewalks is modeling these pedestrian crossings. I've got one more to do, and I thought we could do this one together so I could show you a technique that I use when I'm working with feature lines. I'm going to close the Object Viewer. I'll press Escape. We'll pan this over. The sidewalk we'll be working with is right here. Now, if we look to the right, this area is viewing the same location in the model. It's just in 3D, and it also has some shading on the surface. Let's look at what I've done so far. I have created a series of feature lines. This one represents my top back of curb. Right here we've got the face of curb, there's the flow line of the gutter, and here's the edge of pavement. Let me press escape. So I defined those feature lines in 3D, and then I added those to my top surface as break lines. Let's hover over this contour. We can see the name of that top surface is P-Lot. Let me mention one more thing. I'm going to select a couple of these feature lines, and we'll go over to the Properties palette. I just want to show you that I've placed these feature lines in a site called P-Lot Curb and Gutter. We'll come back to that in just a little bit. Note that we have this green geometry. This is what's defining my sidewalk. These are polylines. These are left over from the original conceptual plan. These are at elevation zero. Let's zoom in one more time. You can see the area where the sidewalk crosses the curb. We can see that the geometry terminates here at the flow line of the gutter. So this is where I'm sloping down to that lowest point. Let's pan over. When it comes to the flanges, we can see these terminate at the face of curb, which is the highest point at the front edge of the curb. So generally speaking, we'll be creating a nice taper down from this edge to this one. Let's zoom out. Since these objects are polylines, I'm going to start by joining them together. I'll do that by opening the Modify menu. I'll choose Join, and I'll select these entities that define the left and right edges of the sidewalk, and I'll press Enter. This gives me nice, continuous polylines. I will now convert these entities into feature lines. We'll do that by opening the Feature Line menu, and I'll choose Create Feature Lines from Objects. I will select the left and right edge, and I'll press Enter. I'm not going to put them in a site just yet. We will name them, though. I'll call them P Walk South, and then since I have more than one, let's open the name template, and we will add a counter. So we'll have P Walk South 1 and 2 for the left and right edge. I'll click OK. I'm going to keep the default style here. I'm going to erase the existing entities, and I'm going to assign elevations. Let me click OK. I'd like to assign the elevations from the proposed lot surface. And I'd like to insert intermediate grade break points. Let's click OK. As you can see, these objects have been projected up, the same as if they were spray painted on the surface. Basically, I'm going to be using these feature lines to lock these edges such that I can push this area of the surface down. I'm going to press Escape to deselect. Let me zoom in. I'm going to select the top back of curb. Now, when I press this down, I want to have a nice bend here at this point. In order to have a bend, I need to have a grip. So let's back up. What we'll do is select the left and right edge of the sidewalk here, and I'll choose Move to Site. I'm going to move these feature lines into the same site as the other feature lines. Let me click OK. I'll press Escape. Having done that, if I select this feature line, for instance, and come up to the Elevation Editor, we'll find that there has been a calculated point placed at this intersection, and that is consistent for both sides. So with respect to this feature line, the elevation at the intersection is being driven by this feature line. That's what's going to create my bend. Let's close the panorama. I'll press Escape to deselect. I will then select these two edges, and we will add them as break lines to our proposed surface. I'm not going to give them a description. These will be standard break lines. They're 3D. I don't need to worry about the weeding or the supplementing factors. I'll come down and click OK. Let's press Escape. As you can see, the surface is now triangulating to these edges. Finally, we'll create the lowering. I'll do that by creating feature lines from these objects. Let's open the Feature Lines menu. I'll choose Create Feature Lines from Objects. I will select each of these, and I'll press Enter. We won't put them in a site just yet. For name, we'll call this P Walk South Lowering. And since we have more than one, we'll open the name template and we'll insert a counter. Keep the same settings we had before. I'd like to assign the elevations. Let me click OK. 
I'd like to pull the elevations from the proposed surface, except this time I don't want to have the intermediate points. I'll click OK. By doing that, it only assigned elevations at the endpoints, which is perfect because this endpoint is at the lowest point of the curb and gutter. We can see that right here. And this endpoint matches up with the edge of the sidewalk. We can see that right there. That's consistent on both sides. Next, we will add each of these objects to the same site as the other feature lines. I'll click OK. Finally, we'll rebuild the surface. I'll go to the Prospector tab and we'll find that surface. I'll right click and I'll choose Rebuild. I'll press Escape to deselect. We'll come over to this view and we can see the ramp there. Let's orbit this a little bit. Just for a second, I am going to hide the surface. I'll do that by going to the Layers panel. I'll choose Freeze and I'll select my surface. Let's come over here to the view on the right. We'll get a better idea of what's going on. I'm going to select my sidewalk feature lines and momentarily we'll move them into the none site and I'll click OK. Notice how my curb and gutter comes back up. These objects are still selected. Let's go to move to site. I'm going to put them back in the same site as the other feature lines and I'll click OK. And you can see it's now getting pulled down. When feature lines are in the same site, they interact, they intersect at a common elevation. That elevation is dictated by whichever feature line was edited last. In this case, those feature lines define my sidewalk geometry. Let's put things back the way they were. I'll do that by opening the Layers panel, and I'll click Layer Previous to bring back my surface. So the next time you're modeling some proposed sidewalk, try using this technique. By leveraging the power of feature lines, you can make quick work of pedestrian ramps. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.